So what's going on guys and welcome to another video today here on the channel. So you guys have actually been enjoying some of the non-rebuild content I have been putting out. The other day I did a video reacting to your hot takes. You guys seem to really enjoy that. And some of the video ideas that you actually guys have been giving me is, hey, maybe make a wish list for 2K22 My League. And that's what we're here doing today. So I came up with a list on my own. If you guys don't know, I do play this game basically every single day. Uh, it's kind of taken over my life in some aspects. But, uh, you know, we have a wish list of 10 different things that either need to be updated, changed, totally removed from 2K22 in the My NBA section. Anyways, I don't really play other game modes. If you guys came here looking for other game modes, I do apologize. But, um, you know, all Ultimately, I think this list could definitely help and be constructive. I'm sure a lot of you guys do have similar takes. If you do have any other takes, perhaps, or just disagree with one of my takes, I would love to hear from you guys down below in the comment section. As always, feel free to DM me on Twitter. I'd be more than happy to have a conversation with you on there as well. And we are going to get into this one in just a second. But before we do, I just want to take the time out of my day to really say thank you to you guys. Um, you know, I'm going back to school today. You guys have seen this one on Friday. I'm actually recording a bunch of videos before this Wednesday night. Um, you know, it's been a great summer so far. Ultimately, you know, maybe the channel didn't grow as much as I was hoping it to. Um, but that's fine. I mean, the people that are here supporting me day in and day out, that's what really matters to me. Um, and you know, at, at the end of the day, maybe 2K22 will be my year. You really never know how these things tend to go. But uh, for those of you who have stuck around with me, I do want to say thank you guys. I'm going to get you guys an exact count for tomorrow of what the upload streak is at. I believe we're close to 90, if not at 90 straight days of videos. So been a great summer with you guys so far. Uh, this is probably the second to last time you guys are going to see this backdrop, uh, you know, at least until winter break or something like that. But without further ado, I do apologize about that little rant. As always, if you guys are new around here, feel free to subscribe. Let's get into 10 things that need to change in NBA 2K22. So this has been my, on my number one list since I've actually started making these videos. I haven't made a ton of them in the past, but I've always somewhat had a wish list about things that do need to change whenever the next 2K game is sort of rolling along. And obviously, we're probably way too late into actually changing any of these things right now. I'm sure 2K22 is kind of finalized. But uh, the first one and the main one for me is player progression. Player progression in 2K has been broken for so, so long. I do give 2K credit. They took out the glitch in next gen where you can send a player to the G League and they'll go up four overalls and can possibly be a starter for your team next year. I do give them credit in that department. But other things are not fixed. There are still huge, huge player progression problems in this game. If I sim three years down the line, I'm sure there's probably five to ten new 90 overalls. If I sim five, five to ten years down the line, I'm sure there's probably 20 plus, you know, new 90 overalls. Stuff like that. And, you know, I'm not saying that there's not more talent being added to the NBA each year because there 100% is. It really does feel like, though, that 30 new 20 to 30 new 90 overalls 10 years down the line probably not going to be the case so uh you know that's one thing anyways i'd like to see change along with that i mean there's even some guys that do you know progress weirdly uh, and another thing that i do wish is just probably not going to be able to change this is some players do progress better if you know if they're a center you move them to power forward if they're a point guard you move them to shooting guard they do progress better that way as well uh which is just something that i really wish would change i'm not just talking about their overall changing which is obviously going to happen but um, you know, the progression part of that definitely needs to be fixed. So player overalls in general is my second one here. Uh, I did a video the other day reacting to the worst NBA 2K22 player ratings that have been leaked so far. Um, you know, for me, there's a lot of problems with how 2K goes about their ratings. This isn't a video entirely on ratings, so we're not going to dwell on that for too long. But, uh, you know, for me, it, it feels like no matter what year it was, no matter what happened in the regular season and the playoffs last year, there needs to be a clear-cut highest overall player in the game, which 2K obviously would agree would be the best player in the league. If you make somebody the highest overall in your game, you think he's the best player in the league. And for this year, in 2K22 anyways, they have not done that. They have four players, if you didn't know this, tied as the highest overall, which is a 96 heading into 2K22. That being Giannis Antetokounmpo, Kevin Durant, LeBron James, and Steph Curry are all 96 overalls. Now, in my opinion, those are the four best players in the league. So having all of them as a 96 overall is not, it's not a crazy rating for any of them. I have put it in my video before what I think their rating should be, so I'm not going to get into that right now. Furthermore, some of their other ratings are just absolutely crazy. There are some ratings in this game that I still question to this day. Andre Drummond is still an 85 overall. Batshit fucking crazy. Kevin Porter Jr. is going to be a 77 going into 2K22. Again, I don't know who or if there's a team of people that does the ratings for 2Ks whenever they do come out in the next season. But seriously, whoever does it, they need to be fired. And they need to be fired immediately because there's seriously no way that they should be able to keep getting away with this year after year. And it's not those two specifically year after year, but there have been so many examples year after year. Players either have way too high of a rating or way too low. And, you know, you would think something would change, but, you know, it never seems to do. The third one here for us, we got menu layout, which, you know, I give, I do give 2K props in the aspect of they kind of threw it back to, the, you know, how the old menu looked, at least for, you know, my league, my NBA, what was it, association back then or whatever it was. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not a fan of it. I actually prefer the menu layout they had on, like, 2K21 
old gen, like just PlayStation 4, Xbox One. Um, you know, for me, this layout, it just takes too long. I could fly through the old menu. And ultimately, I think there's almost too much on it. Like, if, if you kind of take a look at the roster, I actually have 2K pulled up right now just so I could pull from this example. Like, if we just go section by section for me, if we head into League News, there's social media, which I have a whole other tab on here. That we're not going to talk about right now. Transaction reports, fine. That can stay. I think keeping ultimately season awards in league history and league news is not the right place for that. Front office, there's a lot here. I mean, roster's fine. Trades is fine. I mean, I don't want to go over every single one, but, um, you know, ultimately there's just, it's almost too many cooks in the kitchen in this one small little pop-up menu. And it almost gets confusing to kind of go back and forth. And it honestly screws me up still to this day. I mean, I have probably made hundreds of videos in this next gen game now. And it's, it's crazy to me to think that I still, like, not even struggle, but I still almost slip up from time to time just because it's, I'm trying to move fast. I'm making a video. And this roster layout, it's just, it's too congested. Or not roster. This menu layout's just too congested for me here. I wish they would go back to the old one or maybe just tweak it a little bit. That's what they used to do year to year. And I, that was not one of the things I minded. Number four, this one might be a little bit confusing for some of you guys who are not, you know, diehard My NBA fans and stuff like that. The game script, that's what I have it listed as. If you guys didn't know, there is a script in 2K in the game that kind of puts players in certain places. I'm sure if you guys remember back to like 2K17's days, Kevin Durant would always sign with the Atlanta Hawks. Here in 2K21, Kawhi Leonard always goes to the Detroit Pistons. I mean, there are just things like that that happen, and it really doesn't make any sense. Like, it it always, always happens. You know what I'm saying? Just 100% nothing changes unless I sign them myself. And, you know, for me anyways, I like to see things switch up from time to time. I don't want to say sit here and say that I'm going to get mad about a player changing teams. Like, if we're using Kawhi as an example, I don't care that he leaves the Clippers technically in this year's free agency because this roster's not updated, but... In a hypothetical world, when it happens with so many of these players just over and over on the same teams, like I can almost find them and not even have to look them up after we simulate a year, which which I shouldn't be able to do. And you know, this little script error has been a thing in 2K for for years. I mean, I just gave you guys that 2K17 example because it was one of the ones I have off the top of my head. But uh, you know, it, it just has to be changed. There's really no reason. I understand that not every team is going to have a max cap space slot for some of these superstar guys that are demanding 40 plus million dollars. But you know. Just change it in so the aspect of sometimes maybe they go back to their team that they were just with, or sometimes they go to a different team. But, you know, over and over again, it gets very boring and it gets very repetitive. And it's it's almost like I know who's going to be, you know, who I'm going to be playing in some of these games. You know, it just, it's a little aggravating. Another big one that has been going on for years now, and they said they fixed it like in 2K21 old gen They haven't fixed a thing. There is nothing really that different about what they did with player contracts. Quick example, Andre Drummond should not ask for $25 million in the offseason. There's just no way. Gordon Hayward should not request $30 million in the offseason. There are just some of these contracts and some of these contract requests for me that, you know, when I'm trying to make a, you know, I don't even do realistic rebuilds, but for people out there that do realistic rebuilds, don't get me wrong, sometimes if I'm bored as hell and like criminally bored, I mean, I hop on this game, not even in a video, and I show, I, you know, I do a realistic rebuild. And sometimes I'd like to go ahead and sign some of these guys on what I consider realistic contracts anyways. And, you know, they're asking for $25 million, an Andre Drummond request, or they're asking for 30 plus, a Gordon Hayward request. But, you know, I just don't know why it's that hard to change. I mean, put it in the player, the individual player, what they should be asking for. And put it comparatively for how they do for the length of that contract, for what they ask for in their next deal. Like, you should be able to type into a computer and figure that out. It really shouldn't be that hard. And I think they have it in an overall thing. I think it's by overall how much money they actually do request. But, uh, you know, and part two of this for me is I mentioned this in a couple of videos now. Um, when you go into an offseason and you go into free agency and some of these players are getting some of these deals that are basically mid-level exceptions and they tend to have more mid-level exception offers than they do max contracts. And don't get me wrong, that does make sense. But it doesn't make sense that there's like eight of them for every single player. A 96 overall is never accepting $7 million. I hate to break it to you. And there's like two real offers. I don't know why those are in here. I don't know what sort of bug is in this game that that is a thing. But it's like, it's just never going to happen. It doesn't make any sense. And for the most realistic simulation basketball game out there, it's fucking ridiculous. So this one's not necessarily on 2K. It is a little bit on their player progression system. That's why I did include in this one. It's the draft classes. I'm never going to be upset at somebody who spends the time to make a somewhat realistic draft class. Um, you know, these people, obviously, whoever they are, they either do it for their own content to upload on YouTube or they just do it for free just because they enjoy this game. and They want to use their favorite players that are either in college, high school, whatever it may be. Um, but, you know, so when I draft some of these guys who are, you know, 85 overalls, it's just it's kind of crazy to me. Like, why is that a thing? 
You know what I'm saying? Like, at the highest, at the highest, I would say, if you have a LeBron James generational prospect, I think a highest overall going into the league he should be is maybe an 82, maybe an 81, 83. I mean, somewhere in that neighborhood. But when these guys are getting drafted at 85, and when I simulate to the next year, they're already an 87. Before playing one single game here in 2K, they're at an 87, 88 overall. That's when I get a little bit annoyed. And that has a lot to do with 2K's player progression, so that's why I mentioned that part of it. But, you know, again, I can't really get mad at people who do this for free or who take the time out of their life to go ahead and make these draft classes because, you know, as a content creator, I do seriously appreciate it. But, you know, I just it's it's like a tid-picking, like, little thing that, you know, does aggravate me. But uh, this is more directed at 2K and the player progression, but I do wish we could have, you know, somewhat realistic overalls in the draft class department anyways. The seventh one we got today is historic rosters. I don't know why this isn't a thing. Um, I really don't. I mean, they have all these historic greats, uh, like all-time greats in my team, but they don't for some reason put them, like unless it's like an all-time team, you know what I'm saying? Like pick a year, at least probably five or six, and make an entire roster of how the league was looking then. You put historic draft classes into this game, which I give you props for. It's one of the good things you finally did in the past couple of years, but how hard is it to put a historic roster in? Like I still have to go and find a roster that somebody literally created themselves and then I have to use that. Like, it really shouldn't be that hard to make a historic roster if you already have these players taking, like, their face scans and you have their permission to use them in the game. In my team, like, why is that so hard to put into my NBA? You know what I'm saying? Like, you can do it with draft classes. Why can't you do it with rosters as well? So another somewhat small one here at number eight. The social media tab for me has been in 2K for as long as I remember. As long as I've been playing this game, it has been in there. It is one of the more useless things in this entire game. It, it quite literally contributes nothing. There's nothing about the social media tab when you're simming a My NBA season that affects anything. It's just a bunch of somewhat no-name reporters most of the time that are just tweeting what's going on in the league when the trade happens, when a draft pick happens, whatever it is. So I included this one in here because I actually saw this video, might have been a long time ago at this point, from Six Rings of Steel. I'm sure 99% of you guys know who he is, but... He added, you know, his two cents, and he said that it would be a really cool idea to put some of the My NBA My League YouTubers in that social media tab. If 2K is so, you know, constant on needing that tab in here for God knows what reason, at least do it an aspect of make it fun. I mean, I'm not saying that I should be in there. I don't think I have that kind of, like, clout following or whatever the hell you want to call it. But, you know, put Kenny in there. Put Matt in there. Six rings. Put Crispy Flakes in there. Like, how hard is it to add those couple guys in there who play this mode are probably the reason this mode is still a thing to this day. I mean, it, it really shouldn't be that crazy. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure it's not that hard to reach out to them. I know for a fact 2K knows who Kenny is. Reach out to them. Ask them if they could do it. I'm sure they'd be more than happy. It's free publicity for them at the end of the day. Like, if I go to the social media tab right now, Eric Bonish, who the fuck are you? Brian Mazik? Like, Jay Skeets, I know who he is. John Krasinski? Mike Trudell? I know who Chris Mannix is. Steve Oshburner? Like... Are these like individual teams reporters? Like, I don't give a fuck what you have to say or what 2K thinks you have to say. Like, it's just stupid. You know, it's it's a small one again, but it's not that hard. It's just a pleasing thing for I'm sure a lot of people will even like watch all of us together. It, it really shouldn't be that hard. I think I did see somewhere that in 2K22, they're going to add this in some way, shape or form. And this for me would be a really cool one. It would also be a really, really annoying one for me because there, had, there would 100% have to be a way to turn this off. But, you know, I have it listed right here as player controversy. Um, you know, I think a great example of this would be like James Harden, who just basically says, I don't want to be here anymore. There's nothing else I can do and requests a trade midseason. So, you know, if you reach like a certain standpoint where you're like clearly tanking like a my NBA mode and have a player like request a trade, obviously there, you know, technically I feel like there is a way that a player can request a trade. I feel like that's more my GM, but, um, you know, I think it'd be really cool if they like refused to play, they sat out and maybe their trade value went down. Like maybe if they like initially alerted you that, hey, I wouldn't mind being traded. Their trade value, say I, it was like a Kyrie Irving who's at four and a half trade value stars. And I don't trade him in a month down the line. He says, I'm not playing another game for you. Trade me right fucking now. His trade value goes down to like three stars. I think that would just be a really cool aspect. And like that trade value would only go down unless you're like, you couldn't turn it around. You know what I'm saying? Like the season around that being said. So uh, that's one for me that I've had for a, you know, a lot of years. I've mentioned it before to some of you guys and you guys actually did enjoy the idea. But um, again, that's, you know, it's a very fine line because that's definitely something that could be annoyed, like very annoying. So that would definitely have to be something that you could turn on and off for me. And our final one here, which is almost just again, very, very, you know, picky because they actually did get better especially for next gen is the sim speed of the game 
I don't have a problem with, you know, how long it takes me to make a video. I did in the past an old generation when it would take me quite literally like 10 minutes to simulate through an entire season, which is just absolutely insane. Like, I, I'm just comparing this to other, you know, hypothetical game here. I don't really play it that much, but I have in the past played MLB The Show. And the MLB is 162 game season. The NBA is 82. I should not be able to sim 162 games in half the time that I can sim 82. And that's still the case for even for next gen here. So, uh, you know, sim speed definitely could improve. I think sim speed also definitely worsens, if that's a word, gets worse when you use a customized roster. And I don't really know why that is, but it does. That's just from what I've been noticing. So if there's any way for sim speed to maybe go a little bit faster in 2K22, that would be good. But it's also a small one. That's why I put it at the bottom of the list here. So that's it. That is my list. Those are 10 improvements that I am looking for in 2K22. Will any of them probably happen? No, there's really not a chance. But it's just ideas. Maybe 2K23 when that comes down along the lines. Will 2K ever see this? There's probably zero chance of 2K ever actually listening to any of these ideas that I have put out there. Hell, at the end of the day, if they're not listening to Kenny, the biggest my NBA YouTuber on the planet, they're probably not going to listen to little old me over here with under 30,000 subscribers. It's just not going to happen. But... I thought I had some pretty good ideas. Ultimately, you know, I have always just think what I, what this game could do to make it better. I tend to talk about it a little bit if I do notice something in a video. But uh, again, those are just my 10. I'm sure I am missing probably a couple big ones. If you guys do have anything, I really do want to hear from you guys down below in the comment section on what you think this game could do to get better. I think there are many ways that this game could be really, really fun. And, you know, I still do enjoy playing this game. If I didn't enjoy it at all, I wouldn't upload it. That's just a fact. But, you know, it, there's going to come a time when, you know, However many years down the line, if nothing has changed about this, especially on next gen, that's when there's going to be some problems. But, you know, for now, 2K22, I'll definitely be playing it. I'm hoping some things change here in my NBA, but again, I really don't have high hopes. So once more, I do want to hear what you guys have on both my thoughts and your own thoughts down below in the comment section on what should change as a collective for the whole entire game of 2K22. So feel free to let me know down below. I'll try to answer and talk to as many of you guys as I can. Unfortunately, as mentioned, I'm moving in today, so it's not a great day for me to actually be responding to comments, but I will do my best. And once again, I do want to say thank you guys for a great summer. And so if you guys do have any other, you know, non-rebuild ideas before we do hit 2K22 on September 10th, I'd love to hear them. I'd be more than happy to do them any single day that I can make a video and take a break from 2K. It's a pretty good one for me. So that pretty much wraps this one up. As always, you guys new around here, do me a favor, man. Hit that sub button. We are on the road to 30K. And boy, oh boy, I'm hoping for a good year in 2K22. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll see you guys on the next one.